Welcome everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill of Scrummy Quick Designs and today's tutorial is going to be about making t-shirts and we're going to talk about two different things. One, I'm going to be using the Cricut Express Iron-On. I'm really excited about this product because it goes on two times faster than your traditional everyday iron-on products and I found that by layering, so the image that I picked here has three layers. So it has a blue, a red, and a white layer. So I found that using the Express Iron-On allowed this to layer perfectly. It's still, it's very smooth across all three of those layers because this material is a little bit thinner than your usual everyday iron-on. So it's a little softer to the touch on your shirt and it was really nice when I layered the different pieces so that it doesn't have that bulk on it. Okay, so that's the first thing. So we're going to be talking about layering uh, your different pieces and some success tips for doing that. And then also working with the Express Iron-On. And of course I'll be using a Cricut Easy Press. Uh, to do this so I've got some tips for using that for you as well anyway let's get started so to make our project we need to have of course the express iron on so whatever colors you're going to use today I'll be using the bright red the white and the ocean because I'm use making a patriotic themed shirt so you'll need your iron on you'll also of course need your t-shirt I'm just using a 100% uh, cotton t-shirt and also you'll need a weeding tool so I'm using the Cricut weeding tool so whatever your favorite weeding tool is you'll need a light grip blue mat to be able to cut your iron on with your Cricut machine you'll be able to use either the Cricut Explore or the Cricut Maker machines to cut so whatever's your machine of choice and then of course you will need your heating source for the iron on so I'll be using a 9 by 9 Cricut Easy Press and you'll also need an easy press mat. Now it's really important to have the mat because that is going to help you get the best adhesion using the product and it will give you a better way to protect your surface. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of setting up my file in Design Space and going through and showing you a couple of things you need to be sure and do when you're using iron-on and then also how to weed the vinyl and then we'll put the shirt together. So of course you're going to need to pick whatever image you want to use for your shirt and I am using a Texas patriotic image. It's from Love SVG. They have amazing files. A lot of them are free and they also have some paid files. Now you do need to size your image depending upon the size of your shirt. So I am making this for my granddaughter. So we're using a medium women's v-neck shirt for her shirt. And so I want to make sure that the size of my image is going to fit in the center of the shirt where I want this to be. So depending upon, you know, your shirt you're using, you'll need to size your image appropriately. So for this one in particular, it's about 7.13 inches from the left image of the state of Texas all the way over to here. So you're going to have a width measurement and then you're going to have your height measurement. So this one happens to be 6.7. So from the top here down to the tip of my image. So once you have your image on your design space screen and you have it sized for your shirt, then we're going to hit make it. Now we're in the matte preview screen. So whatever colors you're making your shirt out of, you will have those here separated out by matte color, okay, here on the left. So I have white and blue and red because those are the three colors I'm using. Now, the thing I want to point out is that when you are working with any iron-on or heat transfer vinyl, if that's what you prefer to call it, you need to mirror your image. Mirroring your image is super easy to do in Design Space because look here. Here is the white mat because I'm going to be cutting this out of white. I want you to notice that the word Texas reads left to right like it should. Now mirroring is easy to do because look, they've already got a little mirror button here. You just click on that. Now look over here at my image. It is now reversed the image. So it's going to cut out backwards basically. And that's why we will be laying our iron on material base down so that 
it will cut in the appropriate orientation. Your iron-on material has a plastic coating or what they call a carrier sheet on it that always goes down against your mat. So you're gonna be cutting your image in reverse. And Cricut's made it easy for us here with the mirror button. Now I do wanna point out at this point, just because you put mirror on your first image does not mean that it's going to show up on your next one. Let me show you. So here's the blue. It is not going to show up mirrored. I'm going to have to mirror it myself. So here is the mirror button, and now it will be mirrored when I go to cut it. Now, same thing for this red Texas. We're going to have to hit the mirror button. I personally prefer to go ahead and mirror all of my mats when I'm doing heat transfer vinyl. The material's expensive, right? And I don't want to waste any. And it's really annoying to mirror the first one and then forget to do the others and just keep cutting. And then you realize you don't have it cut out right. So word of the wise, make sure you mirror all your images before you go to cut. So now we're going to just click continue over here in design space. And it's going to take us over to the uh, cut setting screen. Okay, so we need to set our material right now. Every type of iron on or heat transfer vinyl has a different setting. So you want to come over here to browse all materials and we're just going to come up here to category and I'm going to pick iron on. You're going to notice there's a lot of iron on settings. Okay. It's very important to know which type of iron on you're working with, which is right here. It is a little bit thinner than Cricut's everyday iron on. So you want to make sure you pick the appropriate iron on cutting so that it doesn't cut too light or too heavy for you. So we're going to do express iron on and click done. And it says here that we're just using our regular fine tip blade already in our machine. So we're good to go on that. Let's go over and get this cut out. So we're ready to go do our cut, but we need to get our material on our mat next. So I've got the light grip mat and I've already taken the protective cover off of it. And now I have my express vinyl. So you're going to notice that the express vinyl is a color on one side and look how shiny that looks. It's because it already has a clear coat uh, transfer sheet already on it so you don't ever need to apply transfer tape when you're working with iron on. So all we're going to do is flip this over and I want to make sure that you know that the shiny side right here is what's going to go down against your mat. Okay, it's that is the carrier sheet or the shiny side is going to go. I'm just going to smooth this out with my hands onto my mat. And now I'm ready to go ahead and get this cut out. We've already mirrored our image in uh, design space, so we're good to go with that. So now that we have cut it, what I want to show you is a tip. Be sure and flip your mat over and then just gently remove your vinyl off like this. It'll help keep it from rolling up on you. And of course, we need to use our pair of scissors and we're just going to trim away your image. Okay, so you'll do this for each color of iron on that you're using like that. And now that I've got this, then we're going to weed it. Always start up in one corner with my weeding tool and just peel back enough that I can start pulling it away. Now you'll notice that there is a tack, the side that's on the white side, this is a tacky sticky. This is the carrier sheet on one side. It's all shiny. That's where the color is of your vinyl. And on the back side with the express iron on, it's white. And that sticky part is what you're going to feel as you're peeling this off. The vinyl itself is just like a, it's very kind of plasticky. It doesn't have any sticky on it because the adhesive on it gets warmed up to add to your object. Okay, so I'm just going to go gently around the edges. See how quickly and easily you can peel that off. Now I need to peel away the part of this that needs to go away on this particular image. And this is something that you'll need. You can refer back to your image in design space if you're not sure which pieces to leave on the carrier sheet and which ones you need to remove. And it'll take a second just to get all of that out. I'll use my weeding tool to get the center pieces out here. There again, like I mentioned, refer to your image in design space if you have any trouble. Now the remaining part of your uh, that you just weeded away, you cannot use this, you just throw this away. Now we've got our image ready 
to add to our shirt. So let's go ahead and get out our Cricut Easy Press and an Easy Press mat. Uh, that's what I will be using. I do strongly recommend you use an Easy Press mat. Uh, even if you're going to use a household iron, the mat is really helpful because it's going to help push the heat up into the back of your project, which gives you a little bit better adhesion when you're doing iron-on. Also, it helps protect your surface of your tabletop or whatever you're doing it on. And then you can get your Easy Press ready. And you can also do this with your household iron. If you're going to use your household iron, you need to look up at Cricut.com forward slash help and type in household iron, iron on. And it's going to give you some directions that, that walks you through what to do if you're using an iron. Okay, let's go over to Cricut.com forward slash heat guide and see what setting we need to put our easy press on. Okay, like I mentioned, we're going to be using the Cricut Easy Press 2 to use on our shirt. And so I needed to go to cricut.com forward slash heat guide to find out what setting I needed to put. So you do that. It comes up with this handy guide here. You pick which machine that it is that you're using. So the Easy Press Mini, the Easy Press 2, or the original Easy Press, which is blue. I'm picking the Easy Press 2 because that's what I'm using. And by nine size and then it says heat transfer material so this is where we need to make sure that we are selecting the express iron-on setting and then you pick your base material so that's whatever you're ironing it on to so I am using a hundred percent cotton t-shirt so I'm going to pick 100% cotton and then I will be using the Cricut easy press mat so I'm going to pick that. If you don't have the Easy Press mat and you need to use a towel, you can do that by folding one over and pressing on top of that. But I'm using the mat, so I'm going to say apply. Now what it does is it tells us what temperature. So we know that we need to set our Easy Presses at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to press it for 15 seconds. And it tells us to preheat our material for five seconds. We will be applying firm pressure, and I'll talk about that. And then you're going to flip your project over once you've got all the front done, and you're going to press it for another 15 seconds. Now, here's really important information. Each type of iron-on has a different um, technique for peeling it off the carrier sheet. If it says it's a cool peel, that means you need to let it completely cool down to the touch. Not that it's warm, but that it is cool, okay? Or there's other types of vinyl that say that they're a warm peel. A warm peel would be that you could, it's not burning hot when you put your fingertips on it, but it's still warm to the touch when you go to remove that liner. Those are success tips for getting the best out of your iron-on projects. If you take it off too soon, the iron-on's gonna lift. If you don't peel it off soon enough on certain types of iron-on, it's gonna be stuck on there. The carrier sheet will stick to it or pull it up. So it's really important that you pay attention to whether it's a cool pill or a warm pill iron-on. And in the Cricut Easy Press Guide, it's easy because it tells you that right there. If you don't remember any of the things I just told you, here is some information down here below. I do want to point out that it is recommended that you wait 24 hours after you've ironed on your shirt before you would wash it, if you need to wash it for any reason. And you need to wash and tumble dry with it inside out. Okay, so always turn your shirts inside out and then don't use bleach. All right, and that's true for any uh, iron-on heat transfer type projects. You don't want to do that. All right, so that takes care of that. Now let's go over and cut out our, get our, I'm sorry, that takes care of that. Now let's go over and start working on our shirt. So to get our Easy Press ready, we're going to turn it on. Here's the power button. And we know that we have to set the temperature to 300 degrees. So I'm going to hit the temperature button, which is here. And then it's going to flash, and over here are your plus and minus. So I can turn down my temperature by clicking the down arrow. 
I was doing some infusible ink projects so it was set at 400 definitely don't want it on 400 okay so once you get to the temperature it'll flash it'll stop that means you've set the temperature there we need to change the number of seconds so I'm gonna hold that and it'll flash and we're gonna do the same thing you can hold the button down and it will um, tick down a little bit quicker for you but I need to get it to 15 seconds because that's what the easy press guide told us to do okay once it's on 15 then we're gonna just let it get up to temperature so you'll see that the temperature guide starts changing here as it heats up to the appropriate 300 degrees so we're gonna let it do that and then I've got all my uh, pieces of iron on I'm gonna be using are cut out and weeded so I've got that I will get out my easy press mat and I'll get the shirt out so our easy press is up to 300 degrees it's set at 15 seconds and I have my easy press mat here so I'm just going to lay my shirt here to make sure that when you lay your easy press on it where your neckline is you don't want to put your easy press on top of the seam here or you're going to get an even adhesion there and I, that happens to a lot of people and I think that's why sometimes their shirts don't come out quite as like they would like to so that's tip number one for that make sure you have this spread out you have an idea where you want to put your image so I'm going to take the biggest image here part of my image I have three layers I'm going to be doing so this is the center point of my shirt here because I'm using a v-neck so that makes it easy I could also fold my shirt in half and create a seam here if I feel like I need one using my um, press it said to um, warm this up for five seconds we're just going to count the five seconds one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. So we warm this up for five seconds. Now I'm going to take the largest part of my image that I want to use and put it on my shirt where I want it. Now you can kind of fold your, um, this is the shiny side so it's not sticky. I can fold this this way and kind of get a center point for where I want to lay this down. Center of my image. Okay, so this is where I want this particular image to be on my shirt I'm gonna lift up my easy press I'm gonna put it straight down on top with the easy press you want to just hit the green button and it's going to click down for you okay I've made sure that my easy press is not across that seam on the top where the neckline is and we're gonna let it just come down. now I am pushing firmly on this I'm gonna lift it straight up and then what I want to do is I need to let this cool. So I've got three layers to do. I want it to cool in between each layer. And so we're just going to let this cool off. You can lift it up off of your mat. will help a little bit to cool it off. Usually I kind of fan it around a little bit. And get it to where this liner right now when you touch it is really hot to the touch. You don't want to do it <laughs> while it's hot to the touch. Um, we need to let it cool completely so that'll take a couple of seconds to let it cool down enough like I said lifting it up off the mat because the mat is material that pushes the heat up into the back of your project to give you better adhesion so it's really important that you let that cool off it says cool peel I can put my hand on it I can still feel quite a bit of heat coming through there so it is definitely still too hot this is where a lot of people end up where they have lifting of their iron on later because they didn't let it cool down enough before they removed it now some iron on it'll tell you that it is a hot peel if it's a hot peel you can immediately after you iron it on go ahead and take the liner off however when it says it's a cool peel you need to make sure that it has completely cooled to the touch before you start to remove it like now this is completely cool okay I'm gonna just slowly peel this back I'm going to take leave this big sheet out because I'm going to be using this as a protective layer here in a second. The next image that goes on, and depending upon your particular project, the next image that goes on needs to be laid down where it needs to go on your image. And then I'm going to put that cover back over this because I want to protect that blue iron on. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do this and I'm going to do 15 seconds. I'm just barely pushing down on this. You can even just use one hand if you want. I'm just barely pushing down. I'm holding it on there. Okay, and we're going to lift that straight off and set it off to the side. I want to go ahead and lift up my carrier sheet and it has removed the carrier sheet that was over that middle part and now I'm going to let this completely cool off before I add my next layer. So I have the white Texas is going to go right here on top. I want to let this completely cool off though. Now your easy press is going to stay on for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, if you have not used it and moved it or whatever, hit the go button. It will shut off and you'll need to reheat your easy press. So now I've got this part of my image goes right here. I'm going to line that up in there. That looks good. And then I'm going to put my protective cover back over the whole image. Okay so that I'm protecting putting too much heat around the blue and the red we've already done and now I'm going to apply the last 15 seconds and I'm just going to hold it with one hand I don't need to put both on there and I'm just slightly applying pressure here not a whole lot but it is definitely firm pressure down Okay, and you'll notice that the temperature dropped a little bit. That's because as your shirt cools, your image cools down, it may affect your temperature. Don't worry about that too much unless it drops drastically. But a 15 to 20 degree difference is not going to make that big of a difference since we're layering this. And now I want to let this completely cool off, cool off before we go and remove the layer. So I'm going to iron the back for, what did it say? 15 seconds. So I'm just going to flip that over. let it count down. What this is doing is it's making sure that that adhesive on the back side of your iron-on has adhered to your shirt appropriately and it just is a, gives you greater success with your iron-on projects to do the back side. Alright, so we're going to let this completely cool. Once it's cool then I'm going to slowly peel this back up. So this was that larger piece that we used as a carrier sheet and then we have the one that had the white on it. So I'm going to peel this off and you'll see how beautiful and layered this shirt is. It's so pretty. The Express Iron-On is thinner than the regular iron-on. Okay, So it's a little bit softer feel to it so I can kind of scrunch this up if I want and it's very soft. It does not feel as plasticky I guess as you would say. So I really like the Express Iron-On from Cricut. comes in a bunch of different colors and there's some multi-packs too if you want to give it a try. Okay so our shirt turned out super cute. I cannot wait to give this to my granddaughter. She's going to be so happy to have this to wear and I hope that this video encouraged you to try a new material the Express Iron-On that it taught you something about how to layer your iron-on images and to have fun with your Cricut Easy Press and get great results when you're doing your iron-on shirts. Let me know if you have any questions. You guys know I love to answer questions and help you be successful with your Cricut projects. Um, until next time, happy crafting!